So I got a chance to uh, definitely start checking out season three. Yeah. I'm not gonna spoil it for any of the fans. <laughs> exciting, <laughs> exciting. Um, I do want to ask. First question for you. Um, when you first read the script right. going into season three, uh, what kind of excitement level was created? Because I know I'm excited just watching you, it. You know what? When, you, when I read it, I didn't feel the same intensity as I did when I got a chance to watch the first episode. Because mm. like we get, I get them in pieces. I get a chance to see the dailies, so I could see piece by piece what it is. And then now, now it's, I'm starting to identify with the pace of the actual. Like how the show starts to move faster. It's, there's different things that Courtney can do better than a lot of other writers, mm -hmm. and you you start to see it because of how invested people become in the actual characters. Because she'll start to focus on this person's storyline and then this person, and then it grows. And then before you know it, you know everybody well enough to be invested in the whole scenario. Yeah. And then that that was the the key to you know really locking in. And having people, you know, really want to watch. They want to know what happens next. Not just about one character, but about the entire scenario. Because people get knocked off. New things turn it turn up. It's yes, like you go, yes. oh, you, know, and it's still you're still invested in it because she, you know, did the groundwork building more than one person. Absolutely. A lot of time, a lot of series they focus on the, the center all the time, and it's just this, 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 this. And then if, if that's not there, then you don't even have a show. You're right. Now, Courtney, yes. uh, this is not the first time you've written uh, as far as contributing to a show, but you're definitely your debut as far as being the front runner, as far as the creator and show writer. At what point, whether it was prior to season one, during season one or season two, did you realize you had such a big hit on your hands? Um, well, it depends on who you ask, because this one knew it was a hit uh, before we, well, as we were getting it off the ground. For mm. me, um, it really isn't... I thought that it was very well executed, like what we got to do because of my incredible cast and crew uh, the first season. These uh, actors really stepped into these roles and they believed in me, they, they trusted me and I was making them do crazy stuff and the fact that they were doing crazy stuff and they were okay with it and uh, you know, Joseph Shakura was like, yeah, I'll light that guy on fire, that's cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> because the first season was that, um, because we had people like Leslie Lopez be like, yeah, I'll give a lap dance and then stab him in the neck. Because of the first season, you know, I was like, this is the best I could do. What I always say is I left it all in the field. You know, if you leave it all on the field, you can't be mad even if you lose, right? Because you put everything out there. You did your absolute best. So I always say, like, I had the rock and I ran. Even if I fell short of the, the goal line, I ran. You know what I mean? So the first season, we ran. And got him. We got him, yeah. The first time. And it, look, this was hitting the bullseye of the, the core audience that we were targeting. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, it's rare that the show just boom and hits exactly what it was intended. And this is why they borrowed some of the marketing ideas for, you know, for Empire. Yes. And then <laughs> it, it gives me an opportunity to create that competitive energy there. But also to attach myself to the marketing fund of Fox because the, the audience is aware because we have the hit first. You know, it doesn't seem that way when we look at the accolades, the trophies that have been given out. But I have to remind these people, you know, that when the hit's first, then they start to borrow things because the corporate, the people involved at the network will look and say, they're smart enough to say, we need to do that. Gotcha. Now you speak about accolades. You're uh, a veteran in front of the screen at this point. You've done a bunch of films. How does that compare to shooting a regular television series um, when it comes to working with the cast, working with the directors, producers, and so forth? Well, you'll find a different comfort after you get a chance to work with people that you really, like, really appreciated their body of work. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like what Righteous Kill, I worked with Pacino and De Niro, and then uh, Later, freelancers, I worked with De Niro and Forrest Whitaker. And then um, Las Vegas with De Niro again. And then Southport recently with Gyllenhaal. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's with these different projects, and then it's pretty much not a point that I'm intimidated by a talent that I'm working with. A lot of times they haven't worked with the guys that I've had the opportunity to work with yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I find a, a place to be secure with my choices. 